Bell Gardens Police, the front entrance. Now we're sitting here, and I want you guys to see how he has his front license like. plate here. Now, if any of us had that, you can sure bet you get a ticket or pulled over. It just doesn't stop <laughs> the double standards. Bye bye. This cop wants to come back bad. Yeah. We're not. Stop right there. Phone. Stop right there. Talk to you. Being live stream on YouTube also. Ooh. Why me? Just tell him right it? away you're being live streamed on YouTube. Yeah. Or any no. No. Huh? No. We don't ID unless <laughs> we commit a crime. Yeah. Pino 148.G, you know, Ooh, are you familiar with that? So I think you need to call a supervisor right now. Oh. You ain't getting no ID from nobody. I'm not? I don't have he, a... He's a minor, so. He's my oh, he son, is? yeah. Oh, so where's your ID? I don't need one. You don't need one? No, I don't need one. Yeah. What crime? You did a violation of the vehicle code. The vehicle code? Yes. <laughs> you know what that is? No. Huh? He crossed, we, we, he taped it, he crossed with 14 seconds still on the thing. I'm gonna ask you one more time. Right. I'm gonna warn you right now, anything that you do from here on, you're gonna be sued for. He's my son. He's asking for ID because you're walking against him. from now on, you're gonna not. be sued for. There was four of us, he just doesn't like his <laughs> picture being taken. Why would I be standing here if I didn't like it? You didn't like your picture being Take taken from the beginning, bro. And you're gonna see, we have four angles of how you acted, you did all this stuff before he even crossed. So you know what? If you want, if you want to waste taxpayers' money, you go ahead. This isn't wasting taxpayers' money, bro. We're on the sidewalk. Yeah, we're yeah, on the sidewalk. You know that's what pays us. I'm talking to you about the nature of the sidewalk. Yeah, he crossed before us. There was still 14 seconds left on the counter. How you see, bro? How you trip? We have Lopez 560. I'm a correspondent for photography. It's not a crime. I'm not saying anything. I was just you can go over to all you want. You have four witnesses That's against you. Yes, care. you didn't like it from the beginning. We hadn't even crossed the street, and you you started rubbernecking you us. You, you, you followed the rules. No, no, we didn't because I wanted to photograph you to see what reaction, and you did the exact reaction that we were looking for. We have this uh, uh, sergeant. Uh, I mean, yeah. this deputy R. Lopez, 560. Yeah. He's he's detaining Elijah because Elijah crossed the. When we were we stopped across the 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 crosswalk because. Yeah, because he was, uh, uh, was my lawyer. I, I said, lawyer. And, and, and he detained him he because there were 14 seconds left on the thing, and Elijah went first. And I stopped to record the officer, and, and now he's leaving. See, now he's leaving, so never mind. His name is Art Lopez, Royal Bell Gardens. He was trying to pull a power move, trying to pull his over. Yeah, yeah. Hey, bro, tie your shoes. You're going to be leaving, so.
he detained him he because there were 14 him. seconds left on the thing, and Elijah, mm -hmm. he's detaining Elijah because Elijah crossed the. When we were we stopped to cross the the, the crosswalk yeah, because. The yeah, because he was. Uh, uh, was my lawyer? I, I said lawyer. And, and, and he detained he him because there the were 14 case. seconds left on the thing, and Elijah went first. And I stopped to record the officer, right. and, and now he's leaving. See, now he's leaving. So never mind. His name is Ari Lopez, we're bell guards. He was trying to pull a power move. Trying to pull his own. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be on YouTube on High Desert Community Watch. That's great. You're going to get about 30,000. I don't care. You're going to be at about 30,000 hits in about two days. You make me more famous. Yeah, and then your lawyer's going to have to do some explaining. So please stop walking up on us. This is our public sidewalk. And you're a public official who serves us. So please don't walk up on me like that again. He's walking up on us all, all crazy like a gangster, bro. Ooh. Straight gangsters. Look, look, look. Luckily, there's another officer here. There's an older gentleman who knows better. Oh, man. I feel sorry for the people you encounter or don't know their rights, sir. Yeah, he's a big bully, dude, and he got turned down. Look, that's the walk of shame, guys, right here. <laughs> Live on YouTube, the walk of shame. Yeah, he tried to punk my son, tell him, because he crossed. He had 14 seconds left. Thank you, sir. He got mad. He said, we got a green light, and he was right a oh, foot in man. front of us, ready to turn, and he waited for us to, to cross. The guy was literally like, we fucking pulled over to film these cops, watch my son cross the street at 14 seconds, and he's like, if we... If we get pulled over, we're gonna get exactly what we want. And then the, the guy pulled him over, and he's like, "Yo, you gave us the reaction we were looking for, so you fucking lose." Chank Uger, this is next on the block. Chank Uger, the media Thank doesn't you lie. For this guy is a left-wing media dude, and he's full of shit most of the time. He works for uh, uh, what's it called? TYT, this company. That the mainstream media does not <laughs> make things up, uh, even when handed on a silver platter. Yeah. They don't make it up. Say one vote equals one vote. What's wrong with that? What's the debate? Uh, a massive search is now underway on this property as the victim herself told police that there could be as many as four bodies buried here. family and friends holding a vigil marked by prayers thy kingdom come thy will be done with his sister calling for peace don't bring the violence here and the ignorance here Milwaukee police say they made multiple arrests overnight we're still waiting on those final numbers it comes on top of the 17 arrests made Saturday night hello yeah No, I didn't go to DMV to get my seat. I was supposed to go Saturday at screen.
you can eat whatever you want while you stream. Fuck it. <laughs> the stream must go on. Burn that shit. We need our shit. Saturday night. We need our shit. You need to take a shit. Burn it down. I ain't gonna help nothing. Sound like you're gonna burn it down. We need in our community. Take that to the suburbs. Burn that shit. We need our We need our weed. I don't wear it, but we need it. We need our gas. We need our food. Y'all don't understand that. We need that. Y'all want to hurt somebody? Take that farther out. With his sister calling for peace. So you don't feel like this was a fair election because it looks like. Donald Trump won fair and square. How did he win fair and square? Hillary had more votes. More human beings voted for Hillary. This isn't yeah. fair. We didn't get one vote. You didn't get a vote. It's just like back in the day when your vote was one third. Well, I you believe did. in you. Women need you. Minorities need you. I need you. Chicago needs you. We all need you. This well, country you need needs the you fuck to up. stand up and walk into the Supreme Court and say all one emotion, vote. No logic. Was one vote? What's wrong with that? What's the debate? But like you heard this man, very passionate about the idea he doesn't want to go to his side. Very passionate. Yeah. Right. You know, I used to live there, and I know that guy. That's John Gerkovic. He actually went to Africa with me as a cameraman. But anyway, that's another yeah. story. He's hit. All right. Thank you, John. <laughs> also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess. Uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. And in full disclosure, let's take a look at what is in there and what it means. They're, they're not protesters. You know, these are thugs. They're rioters. And I, I, yeah, I'm calling out the media saying, quit claiming that these rioters are peaceful. They're stomping on our flag, figuratively and literally. But let's note there that she said these protesters, they're not people. These rioters are peaceful. Peaceful. She just literally said they're not people. These rioters are people. The point of Black Lives Matter is to get Ooh. people to realize that black people are also people. Are people. Amazing. We don't say all white people aren't people. Are people. It's our thugs. All thugs. Rioters. They're not even people. Are people. You know, those non-people. What I want to show you now, viewers, um, is a wonderful scene. Um, these are uh, Muslim mums. Um, there's a little fella here uh, who's bought a little sign, and this is in commemoration. You can see his little sign to the heroes of London. Uh, there are flowers on the street here. Um, ladies with hashtag turn to love, hashtag ISIS equals enemies of Islam. A poignant scene and a scene we should sit on just for you viewers uh, to understand exactly how people feel here. I was just able to get a look at a picture of the conditions that Kayla Brown has been living in for the past two months. She had, was chained from around her neck and was inside of essentially a, a steel cage, roughly four by four by six. And that cage then was inside of a larger storage container. To see for ourselves what might happen in a side impact crash, Dateline NBC hired the Institute for Safety Analysis to conduct crash demonstrations. Unlike GM tests, the fuel tanks were filled with real gasoline. Look what happened. At impact, a small hole was punctured in the tank. According to our experts, the pressure of the collision and the crushing of the gas tank forced gasoline to spew from the gas cap. The fuel then erupted into flames when ignited by the impacting car's headlight. No. NBC's contractor did put incendiary devices under the trucks to ensure that there would be a fire if gasoline were released from the truck's gas wow. tank. We said the crash, quote, forced gasoline to spew from the fuel cap, end quote. GM says since the gas cap was the wrong cap for the GM filler tube and because the gas tank was overfilled, the cap came off when the impact occurred.
We agree with GM that we should have told our viewers about these devices. The Dateline reporter, okay. uh, however, said, quote, at impact, a small hole was punctured in the tank, unquote. GM has now x-rayed that tank and found no hole. We acknowledge the placing of the incendiary devices under the truck was a bad idea from start to finish. Really? That's our new policy, and we'll be right back. Thank you for proving our point that the mainstream media does not make things up. self-evident, like, holy shit, what well, can you politically commentate on this all done already? Every video explains the previous one. My favorite is when Ben Shapiro roasts liberals. Up with groups like CARE, the Council of American Islamic Relations, as well as the Southern Poverty Law Center, the NAACP, and others to educate young people about biases they may not even know they have. And while the multi-approach is, uh, a multi-approach ca campaign is designed to educate people of all colors and creeds, there are growing questions about the focus of a campaign that includes a documentary program dubbed, quote, the Untitled White Project. Joining me now, Ben Shapiro, who's editor-in-chief of Truth Revolt, and Robert Zimmerman, who's a democratic strategist. Gentlemen, thank you both so Good much for be being here. You. Uh, all right, Ben, so MTV wants folks to begin to de-bias themselves, and they have even uh, come up with a seven-day racial bias cleanse that I gather uh, CARE has helped them put together. And uh, the theory behind this is what? Well, I mean, the theory behind this is that we are all racists, racial and even bias. if we don't know that we're racists, we are racists, and therefore... We're going to need training from the mainstream media and how we're not ra in how to become not racist. Presumably, after that racial bias cleanse, there'll be a racial bias, a racial bias colonoscopy, which I think would be significantly more unpleasant. Um, but at, at the end of this story, of course, the solution to all of our racism is to, racism is to do whatever it is that the left leftist folks over at MTV want us to do in order to assuage our self-esteem. And we can all we can all confirm that we're not racist or bigots in any way by doing exactly what all of the leftists in the media want us to do. Namely, if we want to show that we're not misogynist for Hillary Clinton. If we don't want to show that we're racist, then vote for Barack Obama, etc. Ben, well, ben, 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 go ahead, Robert. Me, ben, isn't this the point of your soliloquy where you shout out live from New York at Saturday night? Because that type of rant indicates you're auditioning for the show. There's no basis in reality in what you said at all. It's almost, it's almost pathetic or comical. The reality here is that the MTV campaign, which is also done in partnership with the Anti-Defamation League, internationally respected organization, and the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Discrimination, amongst many others, is really designed to speak to the needs of millennials, the 14 to 24 year olds, who have done, and this is based upon extensive research, where 41% have felt that they are in fact feel bigotry amongst in their, in their own thoughts, and 63% in that study show they've been the victim of prejudice of one sort or another. And it's not the kind of prejudice we grew up with where we saw fire hoses turned on protesters or dogs chasing protesters. It's subtle and painful prejudice people witness on the internet or in comments that are being made. It is a very innovative program. No one's forced okay. to participate, but it has a great educational opportunity. The thing is, though, Ben, you know, when I look at the, what the cleanse is going to offer to folks, it's, go it's activities like setting a counter-stereotypical image as the background on your phone. Ha-ha! That's it! That's it! That, that, and then you're no longer racist if you just put a person of another race as your background on your iPhone. And then there's consuming media that helps build empathy for people of other races. So no more all in the family for anybody who fails their cleanse test. That's a propaganda effort. I mean, the idea that this is not a propaganda effort and that it's not designed to change people's behavior and their thought processes is silly. And again, it, it is all based on the presumption that all sorts of Americans, especially young Americans, who, by the way, their, their own surveys show are not racist and don't have racist attitudes, it's designed to show them that they secretly are racist. And again, the only way in order for them to cleanse that racism in, ulti in order to exculpate themselves is to do all of the things that, that the leftists at, at MTV would want them ben, to do. There's a way let 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 Yes, let it's an opt-in program, but so what? Ben, it's about building awareness. The Anti-Defamation League is not oh. a leftist organization, and I think it's really unfair <laughs> for you to characterize them as such. They've been pioneers in the fighting anti-Semitism. The NAACP care? What do you, what do you make the of their I'm, The point Robert? I'm making is, 
simply that the idea of building awareness, helping young people confront bigotry so they can respond peacefully and log logically when they face it, helping them become more sensitive to other people's needs, especially... Okay, but let me ask you this, Robert. Let me ask you this. Yes. One of the questions in there, you know, you saw we're all, we're all biased, we're all by this, we're bi bipartisan. Wait, wait. Do you think there's going to be a little, a little detector to see if there's uh, a, a, an anti-conservative bias in here for the young people and try to cleanse them of that so they can be more, quote, bipartisan? Megan, it's not about partisanship. It's not about conservative They're the ones liberal. who inject partisanship into their PSA. No. It, in fact, the reality is the entire program it really rises above the partisan rhetoric we're witnessing. And I think... I think what's really important here is that if we don't speak to the voices of the 14 to 24 year olds, we don't listen to the millennials and what they're saying, then we're tragically doomed to repeat the history of bigotry and prejudice that has really what impacted about that, our society. Ben? I mean, is there any value to oh. saying be, that, that, there, that there is some inherent bias, this, this sort of fear of difference of something that seems other, uh, and, and that th th it's valuable to sort of look at that and try to call attention to it so we can stop it? How about combating actual acts of racism? How about singling out racism and then actually doing something about it as opposed to doing this kind of 
Marxist newspeak in which we go through everybody's hidden actions. You know, I'm sensing, I'm sensing a real sort of underlying, I don't know, racial bias to this whole segment. Robert, I find you to be racially biased. I find you to be insensitive, bigoted, and misogynist based on everything that you've said. It may be hidden. Maybe I can't detect it, but we all know it's there. So perhaps you should go through this program. At the end of the program, you will feel free. You'll feel better about There's yourself, and you'll, you'll feel I more think informed. We can, I think because we could all learn. It all comes down to your screensaver. If you no, just I you think need, we you need to come, come up with a different screensaver and, and again, consume media that helps build empathy. You know something? You guys, I think I we, could, uh, we could all learn from this program. And Ben, you've got a future writing for Stephen Colbert. All right, Ben. Uh, ben. Hey, Ben. How's it going? Pretty good. Uh, is it okay if I add like, a couple, one or two? If they're brief, sure. I mean, big lines. So, um, my biggest disagreement with you is that when you talk about institutional racism, I know you point out that there are individual instances of racism. Yes. But my, I don't believe that there are is, there is institutional racism. The reason why I say that is because when you look at what the FBI released in 2006, when they said that white supremacists were invading the police, that was like 20 when James Comey years. essentially said that they have a history of minorities being targeted by the police, he says, oh, history of minorities are pretty. And then you also look at Supreme Court rulings where they say that certain governments, state governments in the United States, are literally with certain purposes and trying to limit the African American minority vote. It, it begs the question, like, how can you say there's no institutional racism when these institutions themselves are confessing that we're doing these things? And yes, they are being checked at times, but these things are happening. So okay, so, the, so the, there are a couple separate questions there because there are specific data points that yeah. you're mentioning there, you know, the 2006 FBI report, and then you're mentioning also the Supreme Court decisions on the, on the Voting Rights Act and, yeah. the, and the rewriting of the Voting Rights Act. So as far as the Voting Rights Act goes, there is not a lot of evidence to suggest that black votes are being undercounted in, in southern states. It's just the, the evidence is very scanty there. Justice Scalia's... I think he wrote dissent in that case. Uh, actually, it would have been the majority opinion in that case because they struck down the VRA. Um, is, uh, is, is pretty telling and has a lot of countervailing data on that, so it's worth reading. Uh, as far as the idea of institutional racism, so here's my general view about institutional racism. When I say that there are individuals inside, I'm not saying individuals don't exist inside departments. I'm sure that there are some cops who are racist. Yeah. The question is, how do we fight, you know, how do we fight racism? When we say institutional racism, the problem is there's no way for me to fight that with you because it's too vague. So if you say a, a particular institution is racist and then demonstrate to me the evidence that the institution is racist, not that it's badly policed, not that it's incompetent because there are police departments that are incompetent, but that there's actual motivated racism there, then we can do something about it and I'll stand right alongside you. But my problem is that when people say institutional racism, it seems to me a broad rubric under which they can subsume all complaints about American society or the cops. So you'll have situations where a black guy gets shot by the cops and the first reaction is not, was the cop incompetent? It was the cop had to be racist because it was a white cop and a black guy. Right? And so what you've seen is the DOJ in some cases, like for example, Seattle Police Department, they'll say that there's institutional bias there, but then they'll provide no actual evidence of institutional bias. They'll just say a disproportionate number of black people were imprisoned or arrested by the, by the police department. Well, is it possible that a disproportionate number of black people were criminals in Seattle? Sure. I mean, that's, that's actually what they found in 1994. They thought that there was institutional racism at the highway patrol in New Jersey. There's a federal case about it. And what they ended up finding, they did a study that they then tried to quash. And what the study found is that they were actually under-profiling black people, that there were just more black people speeding in New Jersey. So the point that I guess I'm making here is that I like when – it's great that you're coming up and citing individual instances of data, and I want to look at each of those instances of data. I don't want to say that there's broad institutional racism in the United States because you have to name to me the exact institution and you have to name to me how it's, how it's spread throughout that institution and it isn't just individuals within that institution, and then we can change it. Okay, so that's an institution that has racism. That's not the same thing as arguing there's institutional racism in the United States as a general rule, because that suggests that America is generally racist, which is something with which I disagree. So, yeah, I might agree with you that there are some instances in America where it's not very racist, but then in those cases where when we do discuss those, that racism in that institution, it's harder as a black person because you're then told that you cannot discuss this because you're calling out people like, when you start talking about white uh, supremacists in these organizations, not to say that all cops are white supremacists, but they are there, like they are something we're bleeding, like you said. Right, and, and, and if you find the cop who's a white supremacist, again, I'm willing to stand by you. The problem is when you make blanket statements like there, there are cops who are white supremacists. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to say there are, but the, the percentage matters here. I mean, are we talking about 70% yeah. or are we talking about like one guy? Right, so the, and, th and that I think is the big debate here. And so that's why whenever I have these conversations, I try to narrow it down to, What's, what's the most specific thing we can talk about that we can solve together? Because I promise you, I will go out there with you and protest against a racist shooting. Like when Walter Scott was shot in South Carolina, I'm on your side, right? I'm on, I'm on the side of the person who was shot because that was a terrible shoot. Everybody saw that was a terrible shoot. But when people say that what happened in Ferguson, Missouri with Michael Brown, when